So, Jai Shri Krishna. Today is the first Bhagavad Gita class. Let me ask you something. Do you have any idea what is Bhagavad Gita? This is a workshop. We started this one. We started solo performance. So, <laughs> let's get into it. Let me know what do you know about Bhagavad Gita? Little. Anything. One sentence, two sentences. Today we are attending Bhagavad Gita class, right? So I just want to refresh. Uh, what, do you, what do you think what it is? So it's, it's our way of, I mean, the discourse of Krishna to Arjuna in a way he explains the whole nine yards of a way of living and, you know, mm -hmm. relationships and everything. It passes everything face much. And how to live life, I mean, how to attain. Okay. Yeah. How you would define what is Bhagavad Gita and why you are here? Well, I mean, just give me the input, little bit. Um, it is part of Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. um, and um, when Arjuna uh, does not want to fight at that time, Krishna is him for the what is Dharma, what is Karma, and this type of karma. Okay. So in your life you have a lot of the Lama, right? In what the situation, what you do, you sometimes mm -hmm. you confuse and you don't have any answer. Mm -hmm. So I think Arjun, just like we are all Arjun, so we need uh, some kind of uh, guidance. Okay. Good answer. Uh, according to me, it's the guiding principles for a, for living a good life. Good. I I read. Brief. Sure, sure. Yes. Hmm. I I read because it focuses more on working like. Karma, Karma Pradhan. Okay. It's like Sri Krishna is explaining to Arjuna for the relation and the karma and the dharma and adharma, the difference between the dharma and okay. the dharma. Uh, okay. So for telling us about what duties we have to follow and follow the path which is true and Okay. There is an internal conversation between self and Paramatma. So that conversation is something we all always have, but mm -hmm. the more we come in tune, it's a guiding principle. Guiding so, principle. you have heard, would you like to contribute anything? What is Bhagavad Gita? Anything. Okay, yourself. Okay. So, we have heard ourselves, right? We have the peripheral knowledge. We know that. Bhagavad Gita is something, and uh, little bit you touched certain points, you know. So I would like to share with you the utmost humility, the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita, what it is, and why it is so relevant all the time, at that time and today also. Bhagavad Gita was emanated from the lotus leaves of Lord Krishna, approximately 5,000 years before, in the battle. Bhagavad Gita is the GPS of human existence. So if you understand Bhagavad Gita, the spiritual journey of all of us will be more comfortable. Like if you have the GPS, you can travel anywhere in the world as long as the GPS is working and you put the right data. Because you have to put the data, otherwise it will not work. So, two conditions if you have the GPS and you know how, how to put the data. And then you are fearless now. There is no fear of driving as long as you know the driving, you obey the traffic laws, you know. But the fear that where I am driving, where I will go, you know, that will evaporate right away, please say that. That will evaporate right away the moment you get this GPS. So, Bhagavad Gita is a GPS and if you hold it and the journey of your day-to-day -day life, you will start thinking differently. So, like 
when the light rays, the ray of light passes through prism, what happens? It projects seven colors on the other side. One ray of sunlight passing through prism makes seven colors of rainbow, right? Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. If you are a student of physics, I am just refreshing it. Bhagavad Gita is exactly like that. Once your perception changes, everything changes. In Hindi they say, Jaisi Drishti, Vaisi Srishti. The moment your perception changes, you start thinking differently and you are looking different things. And that is the miracle of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. There are four schools of thoughts. Today I am just giving you the intro of Bhagavad Gita. Then we will start because this is the new year. We have six, seven months. We will cover everything. There are four schools of thoughts. One is the yoga of action, Karma Yoga. The other, second one is the Jnana Yoga, Sankhya Yoga. This is the yoga of meditation. Third is the yoga of devotion, bhakti yoga. And the last is the jnana yoga, the yoga of knowledge. Not worldly knowledge. It is included, but it is inclusive of the entire existence. That is called the jnana yoga. We must know how the celestial setup is working. Because we are only concerned with where we live. Even if we don't know about our neighborhood, even if we don't know our neighbor, that is how small existence has become. There was a time when you know the entire village. People will know you by the name of your father. And now you don't know the next door neighbor. And we call that we are very advanced. Are you kidding me? You are not advanced. You are diminished in size, in your thinking. And that is the root cause of self-inflicted miseries. Because we have put ourselves in the shell. But the corporate wisdom of these days is come out of the box. Everything has become global. So if you are in the box, you cannot be competitive. You cannot compete the world. You must know what is going around. If you want to progress in your career, you got to know what is happening in China, Japan, India, so forth and so on. So that broad, broaden your horizon of thinking. I'm just talking the corporate situation. So until and unless we are out of the box in our thinking, we cannot compete in the corporate world. The chief CEO, his primary duty is to know right in the morning when he sits in his cubicle, he must know what is happening in the world, not in the United States. It is included. It is included. But he must know. So that is what Bhagavad Gita is. It will change your perception, the way we think. We will be living exactly the same way. We will be dressing up the same way. We will be eating mostly the same way. But when I will talk to you, you will uh, change everything, whatever, whatever I have mentioned. So those are the four pillars of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. The yoga of action, the yoga of meditation, the yoga of devotion, the yoga of knowledge. There are 700 verses in this particular treatise. And since its inception, many, many thousand years before, brilliant minds came into existence on this planet. Brilliant scholars, rishis, munis, the architect of mind, all over the world, Nobody has dared to add one more verse or to deduct one verse. So it is a package deal. 
it is a package deal nothing to be touched so bhagavad gita is a package deal of 700 verses these 700 verses are divided into 18 chapters 18 chapters each chapter the closing remarks of each chapter ends with the yoga yoga and if i ask you uh, give me the understanding what is yoga what do you think what is yoga we we'll use this word extensively loosely sometime but what is yoga if you ask people these days oh, i am doing yoga or oh, i could i go to gym and they teach me how to do yoga what is yoga it is not a commercial word <laughs> it has a deep connotation deep meaning and the yoga is a technique it's a tool it's a process it's a procedure how to unite yourself to the divine forces around you because you are not alone how many people we are here maybe 20 but these are the 20 people you see but there are a lot of existence in this room if you take the inventory through microscope there are a lot of things a lot of things and we have no knowledge we think we are we are the only 20 people so this is the way that once you understand the meaning of yoga they will connect you the process will connect you how to fine tune your thinking and penetrate the surroundings hindi mein kehte hain kan kan mein bhagwan hai right we use that uh, uh, expression to bas dikhai to dete nahi hai we don't see because we have a spiritual cataract we have the eyes but these eyes you can't see so what is the solution i have to go to the ophthalmologist and get the cataract treated then the eyes are okay exactly the same way bhagavad gita will remove the cataract of your thinking and you will perceive things in differently now there are two types of forces around you divine forces and evil forces devil forces both are invisible you don't see them gravitational force you don't see electricity you don't see magnetic field you don't see right but they are there exactly the same way there are divine forces and there are devil forces bad forces so when you initiate any action any action any thought depending upon the quality of your thought initiated by yourself because you are the thinker you are the thinker you can think good thing you can think bad thing that is called the freedom you can think it is your choice so once you initiate any thought because first of all it is the thinking and then is the action right people who do the otherwise if they act before thinking they end up in a jail or in mental hospitals they do that their jails are full of those people and then they repent oh i didn't mean that we hurt people and then we say sorry but the damage is done damage is done so if i control myself and before i say anything don't use those words which can hurt yourself if the other person uses those words if you are hurt then don't use those those parameters have to be respected have to be respected so going back to those two forces evil forces and divine forces when you do divine work divine work means selfless selfless the more you become selfless you help yourself but help others 
while helping yourself, you must have the paramount objective of helping others also. If you are doing those things, then the divine forces which are invisible, they will help you, they will make you more div divine. You will become a model of inspiration for others because you have been practicing this now. But if we don't practice, we are the product of our habits. If you do anything consistently for six months on a fixed time, that becomes your reflex, your habit. If you start taking swimming lessons, you become swimmer. If you take driving classes, you become driver. The fear will go away. Water will become your friend. But if you don't know swimming, water is your enemy. If you don't know driving, highway will kill you. But if you know driving, highway is a flight, free flight. You intentionally avoid the streets. You go to the highway. You enjoy it. This is how the life is. So if when we do divine things, divine things means helping others, helping the society, making the society better, better, creation better, then the divine forces help promote your thinking, bring you on the forefront and give you more chances to develop yourself and develop the society. And vice versa is also true. If I do shoplifting, I am not caught. I beat the system, I beat the security system. Now what happens? I am not caught. Whatever I picked, I picked. In Messi store, I went there, I, I shoplifted. But I am not caught, I beat the system. Security and the guard, whatever. So next time, since I am not caught, what is the state of my mind? Of that individual who did that? that he should try again because he is not caught. So now he will lay his hand on a more expensive thing. But sooner or later, day in, day out, he will be caught. Right? But if he is not caught, he is smart, there are smart thieves. Then what happens? The devil forces are helping him and he is becoming bad to worse. And one day he is a murderer, he is a dawn, 50, 100, 1000 people are working for him who are all thieves. He has a corporation, but he is doing heroin business, he is doing smuggling, and it's a network, very professional, just like any other corporation. He beat the tax system, he beat the securities, and he, what he is doing actually? He is spoiling the fabric of society. Whatever he is doing, it is coming back to society. So people are dying, people are sick, they become miserable, they become homeless, they become familyless. Their own structure of existence becomes skeletal. So what happens? It is the devil forces. So once you initiate any bad action, think of this, that there are devil forces, they will help me. They will help me. So Bhagavad Gita will give you the choice based upon the awareness that it is there, it is there. As a human being, as a prudent person, as a scientific mind, what should I do? I should make a better choice. If I don't do that, I have to pay the price. My family will pay the price. Because to whom so that I will interact, they will be affected. It's epidemic. So don't, we should not do those things. So who, who gives you the twilight? Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita says, don't do that. There's a better choice. And Bhagavad Gita is not only the light, it teaches you, teaches you the process. It is not, it does not stop there. So, that is the relevance of Bhagavad Gita. So, as I said, there are four schools of thoughts. The first school of thought is the law of karma. 
karma, karma yoga. And in English, the best translation is the law of consequences. And more plain English, as you sow, so shall you reap. Everybody knows it. Right? It's not a rocket science. Everybody knows that. But do we believe that? That is the issue. We know many things, but we don't practice. We let it go. Because there is no evident punishment. You may be thinking bad about me. I don't know. I don't know because there is no punishment. And vice versa, I may be thinking bad thing about anybody. Anybody can think anything. Right? So, the law of karma is an invisible law. That is the law of creation. When the Creator created this phenomenal universe, this is the law of the land, law of the universe, the law of karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. Human life on this little planet, you know, if you look at the sky, in dark night, there are billions of stars, trillions of galaxies, space, moving in the speed of light. Look at this planet, ecology, trillions of trees, billions of fishes, and look at the sea life, and there are 7.3 billion people like you and me. Where you and me stand? Nowhere. Nowhere. But look the way we live. We think if I am gone, the, so many things will happen. Nothing happens. The brightest, the prettiest, the most beautiful, the most powerful, the mightiest, the king, the emperor, the queens, they went away. Not a, an ounce of difference was made in the total existence. So our life on this planet is a speck. When you go in the space, you don't talk about the years. You talk everything in light years. Light years. So my hundred years or your hundred years, which is the maximum existence on this planet, does it fit anywhere in one light years? If you have to calculate it, try to calculate, you get nothing. It will be infinity. So if I am just giving you the awareness that we should think differently also. So if my existence on this planet is very little, I am just waiting for the train and you, everybody is holding another ticket. Nobody knows the destination, but everybody has the ticket. If you think that way, you will be slow down. We all will be reflective. What I am doing and why I am doing. That will become the Kurukshetra. That will become the the field of action. That what should I do? The more human existence, if you look at the human body, this is the apex point of evolution. The most brilliant create full package. Whatever you see in the entire universe, in a macro form, in a micro form, you call it a human being. Everything is there. Everything, all the elements, and definitely then this existence is very important. There must be some function that we are here. So karma yoga, the yoga of action, gives you the awareness that look, if I initiate any action, there is a reaction. Timing is the issue. For example, a person commits a murder, right? And next day he dies. The court was not in war. Police were still making the inquiries, you know, and the, he died.
but he killed the person. Now what happens? That is not the end of the story. With his existence, when we die, we carry a chip with us. You are all computer based. We are all programmers. On a daily basis, you write the program on that chip, which is inhibited in your body, in every existence. You are the programmer. You are writing the program. It depends upon you what the quality of the program you are writing. It's so much choice. But that chip will go with you. So you, you better write the right program, otherwise you will have a tough time next time also when you come back. You don't know how many millions of lives of evolution you, we have taken to become a human being. There are 8.4 million evolutions. Choti se choti lekar badi se badi tak. 8.4, Churasi lakh jisko kehte that is what it is. So you don't know how many thousand years we have gone through that those uh, cycle of evolution and became a human being. And I shared with you just now that this is the apex point of existence on this planet, at least. Human being is aage kuch nahi So agar that is what it is then I must understand and respect the law of karma. Because I am the programmer. I am writing on a daily basis. If a businessman is there, right, self-employed, there are one to do the business, one is self-employed, one is the partnership, one is the corporation, then the subsidies and all that stuff. I am talking the self-employed. Aapke koi dukaan hai, aapka koi office hai, aap koi business ka ne hoga. And at the end of the day, when you lock it up and go home, don't you think that what I sold and what I made, because you are writing in ledger or cash book, but these, those are the old things, now everything is in the computer. You know at the end of the day, did you make money? How did you lose money? Where you make money, where you lost money. Right? That analysis is available. If I am a businessman, I, I am not aware of that data. Uh, my days are numbered. I will not exist in the business. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. We start the day and we start, the sun rises and we rise and we start writing the program, right from our home, home. If we are married, we have wife or husband and kids, right? So now, the first thing why I'm doing in my family, because you have to write the program, well, what is my relationship? When I step out of my home, am I excited, agitated, aggressive, abusive, Am I suppressing my family? Is there the divine relationship between me and my wife and vice versa? Do I see divinity in her eyes? Agar nahi karte, to I am writing a bad program. Because if I am excited, agitated, and I come out of my home and I am driving, chances are there is a chance of road uh, rage. You will not give the right of way to others because you are angry, you are excited. But if you are calm, quiet, you question to yourself, you are not the owner of this whole road system. Let this guy go. Let, let him beat me. And you enjoy it. But chances are, when you do this thing, the other guy from the window, he will say thank you. If not all, at least 80% chances you will get this, thanks. That's a good program, good program. But that will happen only if you are not excited when you come out of the home. 
So if I am aware that my family is, is the first entity where I have to practice, my family will be at ease. Kids will be excel in their studies. My wife will be calm, quiet. I will be calm and quiet. If I am the manager, I go to office. I will make people calm, quiet. I will be interested in their progress. But otherwise, if I am angry, anger means selfishness. You are not giving the chance to the other entities around you. You think you are the right, you are the right, you are the boss. That will make you angry. And once you are in that state of mind, you are doing damage to yourself first and the surroundings around you. And the smallest unit I am sharing with you is the family. So if the family is peaceful as a head of the house, whose responsibility is that? Whose responsibility is that? Ours, individually. So today, right from today, or tomorrow, or whenever you feel like, practice this. Give a chance. When, I am just sharing with you this thought, this is very important thought. When they say there is a first sight love, right? Everybody had that experience, first sight love. Ladke ne ladki ko dekha, ladke ne ladki ko dekh liya, and love ho gaya. What happens? You ignore intentionally the shortcomings of the individual. You do not look into, you look at the face. But after two months, we reverse the process. She starts looking the shortcomings of you and you magnify that in her and forget about the love. That happens after the marriage. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No? Yes. Yeah. So, but this is a spiritual talk. Yeah. So what, this is what I am saying. So, but you have the experience that true love means ignore the shortcomings of your partner. Focus on the best points of that personality and the same should be applicable to the other partner. Then your home is a temple. Your home is a temple. All this self-inflicted miseries, dukh, they will be a history. But how it can happen? It can happen only through the awareness of this knowledge of Srimad Bhagavad Gita and the law of karma, the action. As you sow, so shall you reap. So sow the right. Every spring, we go to the nursery, right? What do you do? If you want to plant, you select the good plants. You are picking up the seeds. You pick up the best seeds. There are 20 types of tomatoes. And you ask him which is the best and you pick up that. So once you bring it home and put it in the backyard, you get the best. So if we are so selective, so qualitative in just selecting the seeds, what about the life? Why we are messing up there? We should not do that. And Bhagavad Gita gives you the wisdom, the strength, the insight, boost, reinforces these commitments that this is a better way. This is a better way. And if you do these things, not only you will be happy, you are making the Creation happy. Your perception will change. You will be selfless. You will become outraged. You will go and touch the people. 
and you will become 100% positive. It is a litmus test of spirituality. How much spiritual you are means how much positive you are. Negativity is not a part of your personality if you are spiritual. You will touch the people, you will make them positive. You will uplift them, you will change their thinking. That is what happens. And it all comes through the wisdom of Sri Bhagavad Gita. So, we should be aware that there is no free lunch. In real life, we use this expression. In spirituality also, there is no free lunch. You have to pay the price. So, be very qualitative. What you say, what you think, be very qualitative, it will come back to you. What goes around, comes around. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Newton's third law. Actions and reactions are equal and opposite. Nobody has telling that. Nobody has telling that. So if that is what the law of karma is. So if I am aware, then I, I am a better person. If I initiate my day on a daily basis with this commitment that I have to obey the law of karma and I must know the applicability, how it works, then my quality, daily life will be better, qualitative. I will make people better. I would like to know who is my neighbor. In English they used to say, fences makes better neighbors. But spiritually that is wrong. Materially it's okay because you want to demark your property. So there is no dispute. That is what the expression is. That fences make better neighbors. Spirituality says take away the barriers. Go and ring the bell. Talk to them, whether it's Japanese, Korean, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh. No. These are all man-made titles. We come the same way, we go the same way. We come empty, they go empty. That doesn't matter what religion you are. Nobody is preferred. If there are ten babies in the nursery, newborn babies, and I pick up by human mistake, a wrong baby. So if I am Hindu, that baby becomes Hindu. If that baby is picked up by a Muslim, the same mistake, he will become Muslim. So who makes Muslim, Sikh, Hindu and all that stuff? We, we. So Bhagavad Gita says, come out of the box. Give a chance of existence to everybody. Give a chance. Fundamentally, deep down, everybody is good. But there are bad apples and they are paying price. Historically, if you look at Syria and, and that part of the world, what is happening? Every day, 200 nations are involved to bomb that area. Can you believe that? The quality of life there, the babies, the mother, the sister, the brother, the father. We just look at the TV. We just read the newspaper. But look at the gross pain being absorbed on it at any given moment. And every day it is happening. Sorties go, they bomb that area. Because bad elements bad actions and Bhagavad Gita stands on that testimony that evil will never be allowed. The goodness has to prevail and that is what this Bhagavad Gita is on individual level also. On individual level also. So our relationship with this society, with our brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, should be based upon that criteria. Goodness. Goodness.
things become good, become good. And that will happen only if I understand the applicability of the law of karma. Law of karma. And there in kicks in, in the same portfolio, the law of reincarnation. Punarjana. So all those, as I shared with you, that we write the program, we are the programmer, the chip goes with us. So all those accounts which have not, not been settled, you carry it on, on the books also. In the businessman, if you close your books, debit and credits, they pass on to the next ledger or next portfolio, next years, because they have not been settled. But all other things, they, they are not reflected on the balance sheet. Exactly the same way, when you take your balance sheet, at the time of the final departure from this planet, it is with you, depending upon kiska kya dena hai, you get the existence. And then start paying the price. This ko hum kehte hai, destiny. Destiny. Destiny, it, I mean, coming out of this, the law of karma, this is two types of destiny. On a daily basis, we write our destiny. What we do, the end result is destiny. End result is destiny. Because when you close the books, what you do first? Are you, do you, are you aware of some accounting? Right? So what do you, you do? What is the first type of first step? Trial by error. Right? Trial by error. Exactly there, there at a, a, while drawing the trial balance, you understand at least the debit and credit. But that is the first step. That is the first step. On a daily basis, we should do that. It's just a thinking. Just thinking. Reverse the process. That did I do? The net result is what? Where I am going? How many good actions I have initiated today? Did I do? Or I was selfish? I fight, I give hard time to my kids, to my wife, in the office, to the employees. The lady was standing. I didn't give her a seat. I didn't initiate that, please, you sit down. There was an old lady. I didn't put time to catch her hand and make her available on the next side. No, I don't. I didn't do that. But those are good actions. Once you are sensitive, you will start doing these things. If in the elevator, the elevator is full, there is only one person can go now, and you are already late. Now what happens? If I am standing outside, I am late, and the elevator is full, they said there is only one person come coming, and there are three are standing there also. If I am aware, this is the golden opportunity to make a good action, I will say, okay, go ahead. I didn't do anything, but I did marvelous. I should compliment myself because you are late. But when your thinking changes, you will say, I am already late. This one minute will not make, room will not fall on me. Let me make a good, good thing. This will be a good action. This will be my asset. So I will retreat, I will let the other person go. This is how the sensitive works on a daily basis. On a daily basis. On a crossroad, you know you have the right of way. I said to you before, give the other person chance. He may be under pressure. You don't know his life. Everybody is tense. Be compassionate. But that will happen only if you are at peace. Others will, otherwise this thought will never come. Never. So Bhagavad Gita will bring you back. No, there is a qualitative way of living and live this way. So the law of karma, the law of consequences will inhibit in our daily life and make us qualitative with this awareness that there is no free lunch, 
I have to make the society better with my own actions. Don't blame others under this law. You are the architect of your action. If you want to change something, change yourself first. Change starts with you, not with others. Others change or not change, that is not your responsibility. You change. Once you change, there is a hundred percent divine warranty coming out of Srimad Bhagavad Gita that you will think the others have changed. Because we are not ready to change through the operation of ego. We will not change and we will not let the change happen. But if I change, I become mild, I let it go, there's no issue. Don't make issue. If there's no issue, I am at peace. But if you make an issue, an issue is an issue. So, this we discuss in little bit, I give you the insight of the law of karma. Second law is the law of devotion. In Hindi they call it bhakti yoga. Bhakti means, do you understand what is bhakti? Anybody, what is bhakti? Devotion. And give the best you have for okay. selfless reason. Okay, Any, anything else? Okay. According to the high standards of Shikhar Bhakti Gita, Bhakti is to unite yourself permanently with the divinity through the process of surrender. Surrender. Surrender means agar parz karo. Bhakti means love. Agar aap kisi ko love karte ho aur kiya hai, to what we have done? In that process, what we have done? We surrender. We surrender unconditionally. Unconditionally. But when you put conditions, then there is no love. Then there is no bhakti. Bhakti does not mean sitting in front of murti, going to temple. Lord Krishna says in chapter 15, verse 15, Sarvasya chaham haridisanni vishto mattaha samrite jnanam pohanam vedeja sarvai rahme vedyo vedant kirde avideva chaham English translation I am seated in the heart of everybody. This is the first insight. Lord Krishna says, I am seated in the heart of everybody. So hold this presumption. Who is saying? The creator who created this whole phenomenal universe. He is saying that I am seated in the heart of everybody. So look at the statement. It's a divine warranty. हम सीर की वारंटी मान लेते हैं, फ्रिज लेते हैं तो सीर से हम एक पैकेज ले लेते हैं, टू इयर्स का, टू इयर्स वारंटी, उसको हम बिलीव कर लेते हैं, but this warranty coming of Lord Krishna and seated in the heart of everybody, we don't believe. But if suppose in the widest awareness we believe or start believing that Lord Krishna is seated in my heart. So know what you are, all. You are temple. Bhagavan Shri Krishna ki murti jab mandir mein jati hai, to mandir ban jata hai. Eat patthar ka bana hua ek kamra, us mein aapne ek murti ki sthapna kar di, usko aap gaya to ye mandir hai. To Lord Krishna ki hai, I am sitting in your heart. So know what we are. We are temple. Moving temple, living temple, eating temple, thinking temple, we are the temple. But I should profoundly believe it. But if I believe, now what miracle will happen? I will be very qualitative. Lord Krishna is seated here. Whatever you eat, you are not eating for yourself, you are eating for Him. Whatever you are thinking, you are not thinking for yourself, you are thinking for Him. When you are talking, 
you are talking on his behalf, you are not making up things. So my quality of life will totally change. It will not, my body will not be a garbage can where you put everything. No. Because you will be aware that the jo cheez aap mandir mein nahi karte, if you are prohibited by morality and ethics not to do those things in the mandir, this is the mandir too. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. So you are a mandir now. So wherever you eat anything, you will be qualitative. You will be qualitative with this awareness that you are eating for the creator or the creator. The best quality food you will eat. You will try to create the purity. It should be pure. It should be quality. Why I should wait for the doctor to tell me that you have a blood pressure? Because of my indiscipline in food habits. Had I been aware that Lord Krishna is seated here, I should not wait for the doctor to tell me. I should just be aware and develop a discipline of my eating habits. Wherever I am not doing the right thing, I should make a change. So when I, this is talking of the food, my food habits will be very quantitative with this awareness. Second, when I interact with people, I will stop backbiting. I will stop gossip. I will stop giving hard time to people. Because my speech should be qualitative. I should be motivating people. I should be uplifting people. I should be positive. Have we time? Huh? No, I think it's 10. Yeah. 10 minutes? 5 minutes? Yeah. I think it's 11.40. Okay. So, Sorry, yeah, I think it's here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So nice. So my food habits will change with this awareness. My speech will change. And then my thinking. Think. What I think most of the time. Have you ever analyzed yourself? Have you ever challenged yourself the time I get up and the time I go to bed in this process of 10 hours? What are my predominant thoughts? If I give you a white paper and I ask you humbly, please write down 10 predominant thoughts and prioritize them and give, give it back to me. What you will write? What most, there is no, uh, I mean, hiding the facts. Just write down. So what you will write? What most of the time I am thinking? If what most of the time I am thinking, is it job, is it family relation, is it kids, is it possessions, car ka solte rehte hai, ye le li hai, wo le li hai, ya job change kar li hai, ya supervisor bada hard time le raha hai, why he goes to the hospital sometime, <laughs> so forth and so on. So, most of the time, it, it's, it's miraculous. If you, if you write yourself, you don't show me, but write, down, write on a piece of paper, what do you think most of the time? Challenge yourself, most of the time what I think. You will be surprised. You may be thinking useless things. Useless things which have no relevance. Which is, you have no control on those things. Either you will be writing things relating to the past or to the future. Future planning is called Planning is not bad, but daydreaming is bad. Daydreaming is bad, planning is not bad. So, if spirituality, which this class is, if this is not in my that list which you I am writing, then I have to retreat, slow down. Because if a doctor, when a doctor dies, next time when he is born, 
He is not a doctor anymore. He has to go to another 25 years in various schools and colleges to become a doctor and then residency. But 30 years, he is lucky if he is a doctor, attorney, right? All of the professions, IT, you have to learn the languages. It's not easy. Hum kehte hain ki Bhagavad Gita is in Sanskrit. And that is a big excuse we use. We don't know Sanskrit. But we know so intricate languages of the computer system. There we don't have any difficulty. Because that is the priority. This is not the priority. But what I am sharing with you is create a column, a space for this also. Give that much importance. Do everything. But do this also. Do this also. We will talk many things, the mission of our life later on. Because this is not the mission what we are doing on a daily basis. This is the existence. Roti pari khare. That's it. Because at the end of the day, everything becomes zero anyway. Nobody is allowed to take anything. No qualifications, no possessions, nothing. If everything has to become zero, that don't we think intelligently that uh, I am wasting time? Agar agar aapne kisi bank mein in any bank you deposited but thirty years, thousand dollars every month. After thirty years, you go to the bank and you say, "Give my money back," and he says, "You don't have any account." Now what happens? Either I, I will die right there with that shock or if I survive, I may be paralyzed. This will happen. Because you investment and you are expecting every day, day in, day out, that you will get it back. But it was a zero. It was a deception. It was a mirage. It didn't happen. In, in, this is the net result of our lives. But that is not a pessimistic thought. It is not a pessimistic thought. Don't think that way. It is the active thought. Action. But it should be the right action. If the action is not right, then I am wasting time. Precious time. Human existence time. Because time is not on our side. I just explained to you over 100 years in this total, total creation, uh, it's spec. So, this is how, <laughs> according to the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita, our thinking will change. And we start, we will slow down, retreat, reflect what I'm doing. What I'm doing. We will be doing exactly the same thing. We will be going to office, we will be eating, laughing, going to parties, we will be doing everything. But with this awareness, you will enjoy the moment wherever you are. When Bhagavad Gita brings you a very compulsive thinking, that stay here, stay here, stay here. If you are in the party, don't talk of spirituality. Enjoy the party. Otherwise you are wasting time. So if we are here now, right? Physically we are here. I don't know what you people are thinking. So me mentally are you here? That is the issue. And that is the question of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Mentally are you here? or you are thinking something else while listening to me. If mentally and physically you are not here, then you didn't get anything. And Bhagavad Gita's golden teaching is stay in the present. It is the present moment. Try to live in the present moment. Every moment is being presented to you in the present form. Stay with that. For uskilge training chahiye. It will not happen overnight. I have to train myself. 
to stay in the present. People who stay in the present, they are very positive people. Negativity comes either through past or through future. If you are in the present, there is no concerns. You are enjoying the moment. When you are in the office, stay in the office. Think of the quality of the work, how it should be improved, how I should be productive, how I should become the integral part of this corporation, how can I bring the more sales, how can I promote people. That should be the agenda when I am in the office. But what we do, we are thinking of home. We Everything will go away. Life will go on, go, go on exactly like this. But if you school, then you will enjoy because you are enjoying it. You are, you are enjoying that process. So, Bhagavad Gita gives you the option, the wisdom, the strength, the insight to stay in the present. And through Bhakti Yoga, which we are sharing the devotion, that teaches you. Stay in the present means connect yourself with the divinity. Time is divinity. In chapter 11, Srila Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Kalo Asmin, I am the time. I am the time. Ye, ye time nahi hai. Ghadi is not the time. This is man-made. This ghadi does not work when you go to the space. There are different systems of reckoning the time. This is for your facilitation. It has nothing to do with that. Time means whatever is happening at a given moment, if you are a student and professor is talking to you, teaching to you, stay with that moment and you are Grades will excel. The quality of my work in my office will excel. Nobody can check my progress because I am staying in the present. I am bringing the quality. I am not thinking anything else. If I am in the home, my relationship with my kids, my wife, will be at the optimum level. Because I am investing in that. I am not thinking anything else. No, I, my boss is not anymore there. He is in the office. But we hodgepodge, we mix up things and then we curse ourselves. People, what is going on? We mess up. We can stop it. Bug stop with you. So, Bhagavad Gita gives you the wisdom of responsibility. And responsibility comes through the art of devotion. Bhakti. Kyaap jude huye ho. Time ke saa. Time ki respect karte ho. In social cycle, when you give time to somebody, that time will be there at 10 o'clock. We start from home 10 o'clock. Forget about reaching there. In our wedding, Hindu weddings, two months before, you print the cards that the wedding ceremony will start at 10 o'clock. People start at 10 o'clock from home and they reach their 11, 10, 30. They, two months before you notice. So we disrespect time and we pay the price. How many resources have been wasted? And Indians are notorious for not respecting the time. Socially, when you are late, you are creating a different personality. You are angry, you are anxious, you are excited. And the moment you enter in that mode of mind in the office, you are not productive, you are not quality. So I think uh, uh, this class is over for the adults. Thank you very much.